Globe. Pursuits on Paper, an exhibition at the Johnson Collection Gallery in Spartanburg, will be here until October 3rd. It's a wonderful selection from this very rich collection, and we chose it for a variety of reasons. We are celebrating this year the accomplishments of women, for one thing, and the fact that these are all works of art on paper in a variety of media. We thought that they are fresh and intimate and just a nice change of pace. I think you can see there's a good deal of variety in this exhibition. You'll also notice, if you happen to be in the gallery, that the light levels seem to be kind of dim. Well, we did that on purpose because works of art on paper are likely to either fade or discolor completely. For example, think about this. If you take a newspaper and you put it in the dashboard of your car, leave it there for several sunny days or a week, you'll probably notice that the color of the newspaper changes to kind of yellow, creamy. Well, this is what happens to paper. Of course, the artists were using a better quality paper than newsprint, but still we choose to protect the integrity of the art objects, and that's why we keep the light levels low. I'm Martha Severins. I have worked with the Johnson Collection for maybe five, six, seven years. It's been a great pleasure. And I always appreciate the support and the help that I get from the Johnson Collection staff. Until 2010, 10 years ago, I was a curator at the Greenville County Museum of Art. And before that, I had been at the Gibbs Museum of Art in Charleston. So you might say I have some background, if you will, uh, about Southern art. So let's talk about this exhibition and the things that you find in it. At first we thought we were going to do a watercolor exhibition, but then it kind of morphed into, and became more expansive. The exhibition includes a variety of different approaches to works of art on paper, such as watercolor, etching, silkscreen, lithograph, and woodblock prints. And actually there are two different kinds of woodblock prints. So you'll see a great and rich variety of approaches. Traditionally, works of art on paper have been favored by women. This goes back a century. And I think there are several reasons why we can understand the preference that women had for works of art on paper. They tend to be on a small scale, and media such as watercolor are not necessarily as messy as, say, oil, and also, frankly, most of these media are less expensive. So we have a preference among the women of the 20th century, almost all of them are from the 20th century, to continue this tradition of women working uh, on paper. Early on, it was considered a genteel pastime, but the women in this exhibition were all serious artists. None of them I would call Sunday painters. So let's look at a few examples. There are more watercolors than anything else, and I think that's a very southern approach to things. They're fresh, they're light. A lot of visitors came to Charleston, and watercolor is very conducive to people traveling. And in the reverse, they're also very conducive to people who might come to the South and wish to take home a souvenir. That was the case for several of the Charleston artists. And I'm thinking specifically of Alice Ravenel UG Smith. Her forte was watercolor, though you'll see also a print by her, and I'll come to that in a minute. And she was very successful in selling her watercolors, and these were uh, transported easily. They could be put through the mail, or Railway Express is what they use. That's the forerunner to FedEx, I guess. And 
she was very successful in disseminating the beauties and charm of Charleston. There's a drawing in the exhibition by her from 1917 of a distinguished house on Meeting Street, and that was used as an illustration in a book that she did called The Dwelling Houses of Charleston. Now that book is pivotal in inspiring the preservation movement of Charleston. Her protege, Elizabeth O'Neill Verner, is represented in the exhibition by an etching, and that was her forte. And like Smith and her watercolors, uh, the Verner etchings were easily transported, and what they did is they seem to have fueled an interest in Charleston. So we have these artists contributing to the preservation movement and then fueling an interest in Charleston, which means visitors came. They were active beginning in the, war, in the years of World War I when people had fewer places to travel. Some of the artists in the exhibition came to Charleston. There's one watercolor by someone who is sort of a mystery. Her name is Anita Jordan. She painted a view of a typical Charleston house, and we say, see St. Philip's behind it. And it makes a nice comparison to the Verner etching, which is also of St. Philip's. Now, originally, I thought I would arrange the various works of art uh, according to their media, so that all the watercolors were to hang together, all the black and white prints would hang together, that sort of thing. But I couldn't resist doing something kind of exceptional, kind of ornery, if you will. And that is, I wanted to hang the two figurative pieces together, namely the Clara Weaver Parish, Pastel of Jacqueline, and Mary White's magnificent watercolor called The Shroud. What's kind of interesting is that these two works bookend, if you will, chronologically, the exhibition. The Parish is the earliest piece shown here, and The Shroud by Mary White is the most recent from 2007. They're both wonderful examples of their particular approach to art. Uh, the pastel shows the actual graphic way that Parrish applied, both uh, the short end, if you will, of the pastel stick, as well as the flat end. The shroud is exceptional because of the size of the watercolor paper. It's almost five feet. The figure is not quite life-size, and she is mysteriously wrapped in this fabric. She represents, for Mary White, a textile worker in a kind of dreamy, imaginative context. And the shroud was one of Mary White's paintings in a series she did called Working South in which he explored various careers, various occupations that were disappearing across the South. Textile workers for one, elevator operators, shoe shine men. A wonderful exhibition. In addition, going back to Alice Smith, I mentioned that she did some printmaking and you'll see an early example of her work called Mossy Tree. You'll notice that it's very Japanese in its feeling, and that's because she intended it to be that way. Alice Smith had the advantage of cataloging and studying an extensive collection of Japanese prints, and she took up the woodblock approach that the Japanese masters used, and namely that required for each color represented a different print. I decided to hang it next to a watercolor. So you can see again my desire to mix the media so that there's sort of a hybrid here. The watercolor is by Alice Smith, and you can see the Japanese influence there as well. There are also a couple of the white line woodlock prints. The white line approach to printmaking, if you will, was sort of a shorthand Instead of having to use a different block for every color, the wood blocks were actually cut with deep grooves separating the color areas. And so when you look at the print, say by Grace Martin Taylor, you can actually see white lines. 
There are other artists that are represented here. Uh, Beverly Buchanan, wonderful bright colored pastel. Uh, she used oil pastel in which the colors are actually, they feel greasier, they look greasier. And speaking of grease, uh, lithography is a medium which involves the artist using a greased pencil, uh, usually drawn on either a lithographic stone or a metal plate. We have one example of that in the exhibition. It's by Caroline Duryu. It's called Charlington. And Duryu was known for her great wit, for her tendency to satirize people. You'll also find in the gallery a notebook which has the artist's biographies so that the interpretation is not driven by their biography so much as by their aesthetics and their choice of working method. The biographies are also available on the Johnson Collections website, which is this wonderful ongoing resource. It's one of the best anywhere. So thank you and enjoy.